Well, good afternoon. This is Bill McCready for Futures Trading Secrets. Uh, I've been getting a lot of questions lately about algorithmic trading or algo trading, whatever uh, term you want to use. I thought I'd take this time to uh, share this with the students of the Futures Trading Secrets course. Uh, it'll give you an idea how you already are algo trading if you're doing this the proper way. Now, we always use the CFTC required notice. Uh, please read it. Please understand. You can lose more money than you have in your account at any one time if you're not careful. And the thing that is most important is that you use money management and some common sense when you're trading. This is only for information purposes only and training purposes. So here are algos or algorithmic trading systems. Uh, one of the definitions is that algorithmic trading is also called automated trading, black box trading, or even algo trading. And it's used uh, the use of electronic platforms for entering trading orders and uh, with an algorithm. An algorithm really means a method of solving a problem that decides on the aspects of the order's place, such as timing, price, the quantity of the order, in many cases initiating the order without human intervention. In Forex, a lot of these things are known as expert advisors. Now, the people who use these are the high-frequency traders up here, the hedge funds, the mutual funds, because about 80% of the market right now is run by these algo trading systems. Now, I will tell you that you already have that system with the way I put the Futures Trading Secrets course together, um, and that uh, your mind is a much better computer than the supercomputers used by these other guys. Now, uh, one of my students who was a professional trader with one of the major banks uh, pointed out that he found a spot where over 30,000 orders were placed by an HFT in less than three-tenths of a second, in and out, in and out, in and out, and nothing moved. The price didn't move. They were just taking quarter points as the market moved from one side to the other. Finally, I'd like to say about this is I have a student, uh, uh, Joe Farmer, who has been testing EAs and working with them. I've been working with him on this, trying to come up with something that might be automated, might be useful. Uh, we've tested over 300 programs so far, and none of them worked. All they did is run a $50,000 test account down to 25000 They tend to make 180, 200, 100. 150, 50, 80, and then lose $2,000. And then you're back down to zero and back up you go. Well, actually what happens is the losses are bigger than the winners. And the money market approach to these systems is a thing that kills you. So money management, in my opinion, is still the most important part of trading. Let's look at my definition of an algo. And uh, the first thing is you want it to identify a trend in our system. We want to find a way to identify when the market has changed from one direction to another. Now, the only people that can really move the market are the big guys. Our piddly little 2 to 20 uh, contract trades don't do anything. There have got to be hundreds and thousands of them, actually, to make it uh, work. So we want to get in a situation where the big guys take us for a ride. And what we're trying to do is identify as early as possible when that uh, the big guys step in. Now, they will almost always step in at the beginning of a trend. And at the end of a trend, they will have been distributing their uh, contracts to make a profit. So an algo under my definition is a set of rules on time, indicators, direction, and money management that if you follow religiously um, will uh, set you up for a winning uh, trade. Now the rules on reward and versus risk trades have to be firmly established. If you don't see at least a 2 to 1 or a 3 to 1 move potential for the trade you're going to take, you should stay out. Otherwise, you get chopped up, you get reversed, you get a lot of uh, mush that ha that happens but uh, to the market, but nothing happens to your profitability, and except ultimately you'll get frustrated and usually get out with a loss. The other thing an algo does, uh, this process of doing things, is it gets you free of emotion, which is usually the killer for most traders, and we'll talk about how you can do that later. 
And the final thing is all trades, I don't care whether black boxes or not, are, propriet are proprietary and discretionary. Uh, discretionary is probably a better word. It means that somebody sets the rules like you're going to do here or we've done in our system and then it gets put down in a mechanical way and no matter what happens if you get those five things or six things or whatever they are in the system uh, to work uh, you're going to have uh, a mechanical system now that operates totally independently of you. Uh, what you want with an algo is a system that you've tested and used and worked with getting your expectancy ratio up so you know pretty much what the uh, uh, potential is for the system and then you follow it rigorously. So the secret is consistency. You'll find that even though I show you a lot of testing uh, um, chart templates and, and indicator setups and things like that, I only use one or two of those and uh, I use them consistently. So the teaching actually interferes with my trading sometimes because I want to be hardwired in my brain about the signals I'm using. Okay, so what we're trying to do in algo trading is identify a trend or a new trend. And how do you do this? Basically, you're going to watch for a three bar move. And I'm going to show you this again today, both uh, with the original Futures Trading Secret System and with the uh, candlestick program that I introduced to you in the last couple of weeks. And your goal here is to catch the first wave. The first wave of a, of a reversal trade usually occurs on the profit taking of a previous trend. So you get a downtrend, retracement, downtrend, retracement, downtrend, and usually with a divergence. And that first bounce is usually good for two to three points. Now on a longer trend, we've been going uh, and taking slingshots as the market retraces, or I mean goes down, for example, and retraces up to the moving averages. The longer those that downtrend lasts, the weaker the final move is and the shorter um, move in terms of a number of points you'll get. Now if you understand Fibonacci ratios, generally a move will go one, and this is a ratio, and then 1.618, and then 1, and it'll have an AB retracement. The other thing is we use the longer term moving averages because there's a principle called um, return to the mean. So when you see the price get way out of whack with respect to the 49 or 89 moving averages, you know there's a retracement coming, and that target is usually the moving average. So that is the uh, one big thing that the further you are away the better it is to get a reversal trade. If you keep bouncing along the moving averages it moves up, 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 um, you're in good shape until the price gets too far away from the that average. So to say this simply the big opportunity is following a trend and using slingshot trades. Now Let's talk about the original trading system and without realizing it at the time I developed an algo trading system. Um, that system still works very well. I'm going to show you a chart here in a second. Several things have changed since I put it together. Some of the earlier video videos showed 133 and, uh, and 333 tick charts and things like that. But as the CME started putting out more data uh, we had to lengthen the time to get rid of the noise. So uh, one of my students in Vietnam, um, Kevin, uh, started introducing the 667 tick chart um, as a shorter way to get in and we get out on the 333. So basically the signals from the original system were you get a Pesavento bar, you exit or take half off on a Pesavento bar that prints if you're already in the market. If you're not in the market, number two, you look for the color change on the short-term ergodic. If you've got those two systems, the next thing you do is look for a cross of the short-term or short-term ergodic uh, across its EMA. One two three. That's the one two three trading system, and you can pretty much get in with the expected move of from one to five points. Now your target is usually the next support and resistance number. That's uh, where you're trying to get to. 
Uh, and remember that when you break through one of these numbers, the, tr the price will almost always retrace and resistance became support. So some very simple rules here. It's not rocket science. So what we do is now is we enter on the 667 and exit on the 333. Uh, the reason we use 667 is we didn't want to use 666 and scare the uh, <coughs> pants off a of half of you religious guys out there. Just a joke, anyway. And number five, divergences on the price uh, with the price uh, relative to the short term org are very strong signals. So here is uh, our original system. The blue and red are the 49 and 89 moving averages, EMAs. The uh, red and green arrows are pesavento bars. And you notice here's a 707, a 1272. Uh, here's another one didn't quite get uh, to the right number, but it was pretty much a harmonic trade. And the reason we got a turnaround up here is we had three pesavento bars printing simultaneously. Now at that point, the short term or change color and then cross down through its moving average. That was a get down uh, a go short signal and the first target was actually the moving average, 49 moving average. It didn't stay there very long. A lot of times it'll bounce off it or it get kind of mushy. Went straight through started to slow down. You can see the slow down on the short term ergodic. It's starting to turn over <laughs> and we get a Pesavento bar, then the color change, and the price bounces back up in a retracement. Okay, it's almost a square here, as you can see, a real interesting formation. Now, what happens? You've got a lower high on the price and a lower low on the indicator. All right, I mean, a lower high on the indicator, which tells you that's a continuation divergence, which tells you that you're going to have another down leg. So the down leg is almost equivalent to the original down leg. That's a pretty good rule of thumb. So if it dropped from 1335 to 1330, that was a five point move. If it drops from 1333 to 1329, that's a four point move. So it doesn't happen exactly, but it happens very closely to those general rules. Now the second thing that happens when you get the second low, you get a divergence. We've got a lower low on the price and an equal low on the uh, short term ergodic. Well, that tells you the price is going to retrace. What's your first target? The moving averages. Now, here we got the mush, the bounce off the moving averages, okay? Um, but the white short term ergodic was still above its moving average. And this is how you need to interpret these things that that looks like it's worth staying in. If you uh, say get in down here and it retraces here, you're still in the money. Don't get washed out by that. When you get a big green bar and a, and a short little green bar down in here, you might get nervous. And the reason is the price is trying to fight its way through the moving averages. Well, when it finally gets up here and, and you got in at 30 and it's uh, 33, that's three points or 60 to 80 percent um, of your profit. And you did that in 15 minutes. All right, let's look at something.